Hi, my name is Fiona Crispy. I'm a researcher in Dr. Paul Cotter's lab in Tagus Moor Park in Ireland. Together with our student Aaron Walsh and collaborators both in Tagusk and the APC Microbiome Institute in University College Cork, we recently published a paper in M Systems on microbial succession and flavour production in kefir. And I'd like to talk to you today about our paper. Before I discuss our results, let me give you some background information on kefir. So, what is kefir? Well, it's a traditional fermented milk beverage that is produced by adding a kefir grain to milk and then incubating it at room temperature for about 24 hours. The kefir grains are actually symbiotic communities of bacteria and yeast. Some of these microorganisms produce a substance called polysaccharide, which effectively glues the microorganisms together in a matrix. These microorganisms grow in the milk and ferment it. The end product, kefir, has been described as having a pleasantly sour flavour, similar to yoghurt. We thought it would be interesting to gain an understanding of the roles of, of particular microbes in contributing to kefir's flavour. To do this, we use next generation DNA sequencing technologies to characterise changes in the kefir microbiome and its volatile profile respectively over the course of 24 hour fermentations. In our experiment, we looked at three kefir varieties, one each from Ireland, France and the United Kingdom. We then did whole metagenome shotgun sequencing and our results revealed that our kefir samples were dominated by the lactic acid bacteria Lactobacillus helveticus, Lactobacillus kefiranofaciens and Leuconostoc mesenteroides and also by the yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae. What was really interesting though was that we observed a consistent pattern of bacterial succession across the three kefir varieties. In other words, we saw similar changes in the bacterial populations as all the fermentations progressed. Specifically, we found that while Lactobacillus kefiranofaciens was the dominant bacterial species at eight hours, its abundance decreased by 24 hours. We also noticed that the decrease in Lactobacillus kefiranofaciens corresponded with a significant increase in the numbers of Leuconostoc mesenteroides. So why did some bacterial populations decrease and others increase? To examine this further, we decided to look at the gene content of our kefir samples. Intriguingly, we discovered that Lactobacillus kefiranofaciens did not contain genetic pathways associated with aromatic amino acid biosynthesis, whereas Leuconostoc mesenteroides did. This finding suggested to us that nutrient availability might be a driver of microbial succession in kefir. And indeed, we found that there was a significant decrease in levels of the amino acid tyrosine between 8 hours and 24 hours. This depletion of tyrosine may have caused the decline in numbers of Lactobacillus kefiranofaciens, as it cannot synthesize tyrosine itself. We then decided to see if there was a link between the microbes present and the flavour compounds produced. GCMS analysis of our kefir samples showed that kefir with different microbial compositions had different volatile profiles, and we subsequently identified strong correlations between individual microbial species and volatile compounds. For example, Lactobacillus kefiranofaciens correlated with ketones associated with cheesy flavours, whereas Leuconostoc mesenteroides correlated with dions that are associated with buttery flavours. Thus, correlation analysis seemed to indicate that there was a causal relationship between specific microbes and distinct flavour characteristics. This is partially supported by evidence that spiking kefir with a high inoculum of Lactobacillus kefiranofaciens resulted in increases in the cheesy compounds 2-heptanone, and similarly spiking kefir with Leuconostoc mesenteroides resulted in an increase in the buttery compounds 2,3-butane diol. Based on our results, we predict that it may be possible to tailor the flavour of kefir by manipulating its microbiota. We postulate that this might be achieved by spiking kefir with microbial isolates or modifying the milk's nutrient content to encourage the growth of specific microbes. Ultimately, this information can be used to make better tasting, healthier kefir on a much larger scale.